Hello, this is Dr. Amber Hughes. Welcome to Counseling Ethics Lecture 3. Today I'm going to talk about ethical decision making. So first of all, in order to need to make an ethical decision, you have to have an ethical dilemma. So what is an ethical dilemma? Well, first of all, sometimes the ACA Code of Ethics doesn't tell you explicitly how to act in a situation. This can sometimes cause a dilemma. For example, um, in the 2005 version of the ACA Code of Ethics, technology and social media, that wasn't really a huge thing then, so they didn't really address it a, a whole lot in the, the 2005 Code of Ethics. Well, the most recent version of the, the Code of Ethics um, was developed uh, and released in 2014. So that's a pretty big gap of nine years, right? And so what happened was um, there's a lot of, you know, the growth or explosion, I guess, of social media and um, Facebook and Twitter and, and all of those things. Uh, and also, you know, online counseling. So using technology and counseling. Um, and and so if, uh, if well, prior to 2014, um, we were all going by the 2005 Code of Ethics, and it just really didn't talk a whole lot about technology. There was, I think, one standard um, that, that mentioned it. Uh, well, in the 2014 version, they created a whole, like, subsection of, or a section of the, the code um, that uh, talks about technology and technology use in in counseling. Um, so, so again, previous to 2014, if you were um, trying to decide if you should friend a client or if you should um, do online counseling, if you're, you know, you know if you're, you're remain, remaining ethical, uh, there wasn't a whole lot to guide you um, in terms of that um, before they came out with this new version. And so it, it caused a, a bit of an ethical dilemma for some people. Um, the second reason why you might um, face an ethical dilemma is when moral principles and the subsequent standards and the ACA Code of Ethics compete with one another. So in the previous lecture, I mentioned um, an example where two of the the moral principles um, were were in competition, and so you have to choose which principle to uphold. There's um, generally no right answer in an ethical dilemma. It's a matter of going through the decision making process and making a decision based on um, the best information you can. Um, sometimes when laws and ethics clash, you must make a, an ethical de decision. Um, so, for example, our code of ethics um, asks us to keep information confidential. Um, well, if you're dealing with a client who who maybe um, is interacting with the court in some form or fashion, um, that you may be subpoenaed um, to disclose what you have uh, talked about in a counseling session, and so you have to you have to choose um, whether or not you're going to follow the law. Um, and respond to the subpoena, or if you're going to maintain confidentiality. That's an ethical dilemma, which requires you to go through the decision-making process. Um, another example of when you might face an ethical, ethical dilemma is when your organization's policies do not align with the ACA Code of Ethics, and so you, then you may be forced to make, an, uh, make a decision. Um, so, for example, I was a school counselor at a school um, and the the district's policy was that we disclosed drug use of students, and we reported that to administration and to parents. Um, that may or may not have required a, a break of confidentiality according to the Code of Ethics. If I thought that a student was going to be harmed, then that would have kind of fallen under that standard, right, of disclosing in, in instances of, of harm to client. Um, but some, some drug use was... Um, would not have fallen under that sub, you know, that, that, that kind of standard or that, um, that aspect of the code. And so I would not, according to our code of ethics, felt like I needed to disclose that information. So I had to make some choices sometimes. Do I uphold the organization's policies or do I uphold the code of ethics? Um, we follow a, 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 an ethical decision-making model in counseling, um, and in any fields. Uh, there are a lot of different models. Here's kind of the, um, a, a standard model um, that you might follow whenever you are trying to solve or, or an ethical dilemma when you're trying to go through that decision-making process. It's important um, when you are going through an ethical decision-making uh, process to document everything um, because uh, it can result um, in, in going to court sometimes. Um, sometimes it's just a matter of documenting to um, for your organization's uh, maybe review or supervision and so on. But anytime you're making an ethical dilemma, 
um, you want to make sure that you're documenting your process to make sure that again um, the it can bear up to, to public scrutiny of its application. So first you need to identify and define the problem. Um, second, you need to involve your client in the decision making process as much as possible. Um, third, you need to review relevant codes and professional literature. Uh, so make sure you're looking at the code of ethics, make sure you're reviewing any any writings, any literature on the, the topic. Consider the principle and virtues. So sometimes, again, the standards may not spell out something, um, but you can go back to those moral principles um, to help you make a decision. Uh, tune into your feelings. Um, sometimes when you're making a decision, uh, it is about your feelings or, or kind of your gut. Um, so um, a lot of times I'll tell students um, when it comes to breaking confidential confidentiality over uh, like suicide threats, so I'll tell them to to do what they can live with. Um, because in in my opinion, in my personal practice, um, when it comes to uh, safety, I always err on the side of caution. Um, versus maintaining confidentiality. Uh, so it's uh, it's more important to me that my client is safe than we maintain that uh, than that we maintain that counseling relationship. Um, six consult with colleagues or experts. Um, so always always uh, consult in cases of ethical decision making. Uh, if you're under supervision, consult your supervisor. If you're in an organization with a supervisor, consult your supervisor. Consult your colleagues. Um, bring in legal experts if if possible. Consider the content. Um, so again, um, if it's a, a dilemma involving safety, um, that is a game changer in my opinion. That makes um, makes these decisions more um, more important uh, than a, a decision that, that doesn't necessarily um, involve safety. Consider desired outcomes and potential uh, actions. Um, so really consider all your options and consider the consequences of those options. Um, and then choose the best possible action and then you always want to review it. Follow up on that action and see how it, uh, review how it turned out and then go through the decision making process again if you need to. Um, sometimes legal issues are involved, as I mentioned. Um, and so I wanted to talk just a little bit about uh, uh, kind of this the the process of recognizing legal issues. Um, sometimes it's difficult to determine when there's a legal problem or to know what to do once a problem has been identified. Sometimes it's obvious if you're you've gotten a subpoena, right? Sometimes it's a little bit harder. Um, if it's a case of harm to others, um, that's an area where there may or may not be a legal problem, right? There's no legal problem if they don't follow up on that threat of harm to others. There is a legal problem if they do, right? Um, a simple test to determine if there is a legal issue involved is to, is to decide if any of the following conditions apply. Um, if legal proceedings of some type have been initiated, yes, it is a legal problem. problem. If lawyers are on the scene, if you are vulnerable to having a complaint filed against you for misconduct, um, that becomes a legal issue. Um, what you want to do is obtain legal advice. If you're employed by an organization or agency that provides counseling services to the public, these entities have access to the regular services of attorneys. Um, and that extends to their employees who work with the public. So if you're working for, for an agency, um, talk to your supervisor, talk to your administrators and see what kind of um, legal service they have. Um, if you're private practice, you might want to um, employ a lawyer uh, to, to help you with that. Um, uh, with your issue. Uh, exercising professional judgment is another component of legal issues. Um, unfortunately, uh, we have to make decisions, right? So, so dilemmas are called dilemmas because they're hard. They're, they're not, there's no easy answer, right? There's no one right answer. You're, you're making the best possible decision. And so what you're doing is you're exercising your professional judgment when you make this decision. Um, and this happens every day, whether it's a small dilemma or a large one. Uh, each of these decisions that we make, because there is no right answer, they are at risk for being accused um, of wrongdoing, okay? Because again, there's no clear answer whenever we're facing an ethical dilemma. And so it's important to understand the legality involving um, the dilemma you face. Uh, obtaining legal device um, is a support for you. 
Okay, another support is to consult with colleagues when making these difficult professional judgments. Um, so again, it's your responsibility to make a decision because you're a counselor. Um, it's also really important that you don't make that decision in a vacuum. Make sure that you're employing all the resources that you can. Make sure you're getting information from all the people involved. Make sure that you're um, getting support from your colleagues, from your supervisors, from your administrators, whenever you're trying to make a decision, especially those tough ones.